I think the nuanced differences for different people is going to be, um, as Martin said, really interesting. But but there's a dominant emotion that's emerging, which um, clinicians have started to label sort of languishing. This idea that you're not burnt out because you still have energy and you're not depressed because you're not hopeless. You're sort of in this middle ground where we're kind of exhausted, but we're not driven. We don't, and, and I do want to say, actually, for me, those are very similar to what Martin was saying around early warning signs, when people actually don't know how to name their emotion. And in the English language and in our English culture, we're not very good at doing I feel statements. We're very good at doing I think statements because, and particularly in the workplace. So I guess I'm just putting it in the room and people that are listening, like think about this space where we don't need to pathologize every health or mental health issue, but actually there is this languishing thing that's going on where we aren't feeling resilient, we aren't feeling motivated, driven. And I guess what's our job as leaders to lead by example, because we're, we're going through that as well. It's not just happening to our peers and our teams. We're going through that and naming that and then going, actually, each day I'm going out for a walk and I'm spending time with my mom on the phone. Those are the small things that rebuild our resilience and our well-being, but they're not seen as leadership, leadership critical and they really are. And we have to speak about not just, you know, we're struggling, like what are the things that we're doing to get us motivated and driven again? Because that's what you know, my kids want to hear, my junior members of my team want to hear, and I need to learn from them because they're actually better at it than, than I am because I'm old. So I think there's that as well, that two-way learning, validating colleagues and other people's experiences.